Good morning, everyone. Thank you, NID, for the opportunity to share a bit about empowering deaf women. To start with, I want to talk a bit about my childhood. The net, yes, thank you. So at my home, all of my family are deaf. My father, my mother, and my sister. We are all deaf. We are three generations of deaf people, from my grandfather up to me. And we are proud to be deaf, proud to be from a deaf house, signing deaf people, and feel very strong about deaf culture. When I was three years old, my sister Stefani is older than I am. And when my mother found out she was deaf, she didn't really know what to do, um, but then decided to move us to Dalabad School for the Deaf. And about seven years later, I was born, and my mother assumed that I would be deaf as well. And when I was three years old, I was moved to the hospital <coughs> at Dalabad School for the Deaf. As at three years old, I had to stay away from my mother during the week. Now, as Della Bat School noticed, I was reading and writing at a very good level, and they tried to move me to a mainstream school for hearing children, because I have very good residual hearing, but I depend a lot on lip reading. So my parents and the school talked and discussed and I was moved to Booster North Primary School from grade R to grade three. And one morning I was crying a lot. And I said, I don't want to go to school. And my mother think, you know, maybe she's far away. I am alone. And they moved so that I could be closer to them at a school. Three weeks later, it didn't change anything. I was still crying and I still didn't want to go to school. And my mother thought, what could be the reasons? Maybe she thought, maybe I'm too small, too young to explain exactly why. So she moved me back to the school for the deaf. Um, so from grade four, I was there up until matric. And now looking back, being at a school for the deaf, the support and protection that you get and the education was very good to prepare me for being out of school. So I'm very grateful to the school. When I finished school, I thought, now what? I was 17 years old and I thought, what is my journey going to be? What am I doing next? Next slide, please. And I have a passion for making food. So I thought maybe I could be a chef. And I had a few goals and I thought, let's see if hospitality is what I want to do. So I went to a hospitality school in Hermanus. It was a small private college about 10 to 12 students in the class. And it's a hearing college. I was the only deaf student. The college had never had a deaf student before. So at the college, I was a little bit nervous, even a bit scared because at the school for the deaf, everyone is deaf. At my home, everyone is deaf. And now I'm the only deaf in the hearing world. So I had to adapt. And the hearing people would sometimes adapt to me, but that rarely happens. I always, it feels like, have to adapt to the hearing people. So I was there at the hospitality college for six months. I enjoyed the practical a lot. It's a lot of visuality, creativity, but the theory, I hated it there was this one teacher who spoke so fast and the lips were not very well formed and it was in English. So for the first three months, 
I really felt like I was drowning. Didn't know what to do, really considering just giving up. But then I did some introspection and said to myself, well, I set a goal for myself. I am going to achieve that goal. So I was fortunate to have a good friend who wrote down as many notes as she could, because it was difficult for me to look at the teacher and write down. I can't, I would miss a lot. So I asked my friend, would you please show me your notes? And then at home, I would copy these notes, do the assignments, and then compare my notes with her notes and to make sure that I had all the information. At the exam, I was very uncertain of myself. I didn't know if I was going to pass, but I just went on. And yes, I, I failed. I cried so much. I was absolutely disappointed. I wanted to just leave. The principal called me and said, well, he sees that I have motivation and passion and that I had one more opportunity to do the exam. And I studied all over again. Anything I was unsure about, I would go to the teacher and one-on-one, -on -one, finally, I passed. I was so excited. And it shows that if I had given up, I wouldn't have achieved that. It was difficult, yes. So after the college, I looked for a job. I was in Cape Town. I was in Fuster, And I met my husband. And I moved back to where I was in childhood. I thought after school I would never be back. But now here I am. So in, in Worcester, there's not a lot of opportunities to, in the hospitality industry. And I realized hospitality is not my only passion. I discovered that I had to find other passions. So I did some jobs to grow my skills and to gain some experience. And then my first child was born, my daughter, and she's now four years old. And she was born deaf. So me and my husband, we have discussed prior to the daughter being born, what we're going to do about her being deaf. We were never sure if our child was going to be deaf or hearing. So when we went to the audiologist and she said, yes, Carly is deaf. And you and I on that day was very emotional because there's so many thoughts that rolled around in our head because we know we live in a hearing world. We know access is a massive problem. We know education is a huge challenge. There's not a lot of opportunities for deaf people in South Africa. So all these kinds of thoughts rolled around in our head and they were all negative thoughts. So we had to decide Let's not think about the future too much. Let's take it step by step. So we got Carly some hearing aids. And when she was one year and six months, she became very sick. She had a 40 degree fever. We went to the doctor and he said that she had middle ear infection. She got grommets and for six weeks, she was having problems with her ears. So with the hearing aids, we had cute pink hearing aids and she can hear her name when I call her. When the dog barked, she could hear that. The doorbell, she could hear. We were signing with her. And at the crash, that was a crash for hearing children. She could get some exposure to spoken language there. But once the infection occurred, all of her hearing was gone. She could not hear with a hearing aid anymore. And similar to when we first discovered she was deaf, it was an emotional event. So then we asked ourselves, I'm deaf. And looking back, I did fine. And my husband as well. And why can't I expect that for my own children? 
So we then discussed what we want to do with my daughter. So we wanted to put her in a school for hearing children. You have so many more opportunities and you have to make as much of that as you can because if you're deaf, opportunities are very limited. So the audiologist suggested a cochlear implant. Now, I know in the deaf community, it's a sensitive issue and I'm in a deaf family and it's there to use. We have done a lot of research about it and we decided, yes, we want her to have an implant. Now she has had implants for the past two years and we are very proud and satisfied with the decision that we made because she's in the mainstream school and she's doing very well. She is jumping in both worlds and doing well in both. At home, she's signing with us and, our, and her grandparents, with her friends at school, she's using spoken language. And looking back as a deaf woman, I'm truly proud of what we have done and what we've decided. And I really hope that Carly will, as she grows up, be the next deaf woman to look back and be proud of her own achievements. So yes, so my daughter was born. My son recently became one year old and he's also deaf, uh, but he's hard of hearing. So he hears relatively well and he's got hearing aids and we're looking forward to see how he develops. Now, how can I link this? When I moved, PowerPoint, next slide, please, Lynette. When I um, moved to Worcester, I, as I said, I tried different jobs. And then I heard that Della Butt School was looking for a classroom assistant. And I started thinking, okay, it's a school for the deaf, it's deaf children, I'm deaf, I think I can have a really good impact on the deaf children and really help them to develop. So I applied and I got the job as a classroom assistant and I decided, yes, education for deaf children is another passion of mine. I really thoroughly enjoyed the job. And deaf children today have many, many challenges. They're from very different backgrounds and very different homes. And this opportunity is there for me to transfer to others what I have. They can see, ah, oh, this is a deaf woman and she's got a job and she's got this and that so that they can have a role model and gain confidence for their own future. Eventually, there was a new project established at the school to develop learning material because South African Sign Language had become a subject at schools, but there was no learning material and that needed to be developed. So South African Sign Language is a visual language, so you need videos and lots of images. So I moved from classroom assistant to storyteller. And I loved that. I really found that I discovered who I am. I could really live out my creativity. And I worked with five different schools for the deaf. And that was extremely exciting for me because as I went to the schools, the children were excited and see, oh, she's the one that's on the video. And they were so excited to discover that I was deaf just like them and I could see that the children were inspired. So through that job I tried to empower more deaf people. So when we used models and we wherever we could we used deaf people. When we did video recordings we used deaf people. When we did photography we used deaf people. So as far as we could, we wanted and we did involve deaf people from the community because it's so critical that the deaf children see a deaf role model. 
And at my job, I really started thinking, what could I do with my own children? Because I feel my children are privileged because they're still young and I could use the material at school to teach them. And they gave me experience from which I could discover other types of material to be used in education. And as a deaf woman, I'm proud to say that as a project coordinator, I could show as a deaf person, I could do this. I could make these decisions. I could make important choices. I have the ability to do this. And many hearing people do not realize that. And this material is spread throughout all of the schools for the deaf in South Africa. And I'm extremely excited that deaf children now have more access to education. Now about the month of August being a month for celebrating women. And I work with a lot of women. So I really want to say, viva deaf women. Um, my own role models, on the next slide please, that I look up to are these two ladies, my mother and my sister Stefani. My mom is a fighter, an activist extraordinaire. Looking at her life, she always fights for sign language. That is her language, her dream is to see South African Sign Language become the 12th official language of South Africa. From her, I learned to never give up. In your life, you will see that you can't do anything. You won't see any light anywhere. You will feel like you are in darkness. And from my mother, I learned it doesn't matter where you are. It doesn't matter what happens. You find a solution. You go through those barriers and you find the light. The other is my sister. At the moment, she lives in the UK. And it's, we have an eight year difference. She's eight years older than I am. It's quite a big gap. And now looking back, I realized that I really look up to my sister. And from her, I learned to be humble, to be kind to other people. She likes and always makes sure that deaf people be involved in everyday life. Many deaf people have a huge information gap. They lack so much information about what's happening in the world and in their lives sometimes. So she wants to give deaf people the opportunity and accessibility to be involved. So now looking at my mother and my sister, my mother is the activist and my sister is the carer. Let's get everyone together. So these two, I, I feel are combined in me and I can live that out in education with deaf children. We, the three of us, as deaf women, are inspired and excited about the next generation. And I hope, as I have learned, from my mother and sister. So too, I can through my actions empower other deaf girls and deaf children to do the same. And I hope that as I express myself, that others who look at me will learn something, will learn something from me. And before I want to finish, I found a poem. So this is a poem that someone wrote. And we changed this a little bit 
to South African Sign Language. So I want to say thank you to my sister who did the poem. It's a short video and that I would like you all to watch and then I will continue. Thank you. Lynette, please. I am a woman. I am a woman. I'm not scared. My body is tired. Yes. My life's journey has made me tired. I've been oppressed. I am a woman. I am a woman. I'm okay. I don't get enough. I want to say my say, but I'm stopped. I have my style. I'm unique. I make my decisions. I dress as I like. You can look at me in any way you want. I am a woman. I'm less. No, no, no. I am not going to be the lesser. I am a woman. Yes. But before I'm a woman, I'm a human, just like you. We respect each other. It doesn't matter the color of your skin. It doesn't matter your gender. We are human. We are safe. So this poem was written in Afrikaans, and if you would like to read that, um, you can do that at a later time. We, as deaf women, we do our best. We have life experiences, and we learn from that. As we learn, we grow and we develop, and we empower others who look at us. We empower the next generation. We are all of us role models. I hope that others who look at me see me as a deaf woman and sees deaf women are able. Deaf women can go through any challenge. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Wow. Um all the SSL users can just pin the interpreter now. Um, first of all, Vanessa, thank you so much for this inspiring and empowering message, especially to deaf women. I really believe that this is an opportunity for other people, especially deaf women, to see you as a deaf role model. So thank you so much for this message. Um, and to share your personal journey with us um, is amazing. And also well done with all your successes and breaking down the barriers that is in front of you. So thank you and good luck with your future. Thank you to everyone that has been listening. Um, this is, uh, I think it was a successful Zoom session. Um, Please, if you have any questions, send it to us. Um, the email address is at the top of the chat box, but again, pa.support at nid.org.za. And then have a look out with, for more information on our next Zoom session that will take place on the 1st of October. We will put it on NID's Facebook page, as well as send it by email again. Um, yeah, and that's it from us. So thank you so much and hope you have a blessed weekend. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you so much.